call this meeting to order. Uh, tonight is June 11th. Uh, this is a regular board meeting for the Track City United School Board uh, being held in the TCU High School Band Room. Um, roll call vote shows that Board Chair Marsha Fronick and Dan Rudder are both gone. And we'll move to administrative report. Um, do you want to pop that open for me? I don't have the mouse right now. Thank you. I'm just going to hit a couple of uh, highlights and again ask that uh, as ev everyone has a chance to please read through the reports. There's a lot of great things in all of our four strategic directions that are happening. Um, we have summer school starting here in July with all of our elementary schools, so 9th through the 26th of July. Those are Monday through Thursday. We also have extended school year that will be starting in July. And as a matter of fact, our high school targeted services um, credit recovery program started this week already. Uh, moving on down to community education, a couple of things to highlight here as well. We did do our Ready for K um, uh, days here in May, which is a chance for our little uh, ones who are going to be coming into kindergarten next year to actually experience some kindergarten days. And a pretty typical uh, number of attendance as we have in other years. And then on August 6th through 9th, we do do our jump, our kickoff to kindergarten for incoming kindergartners. And this is also offered at all of our sites with kindergarten. We expanded the uh, Special Olympics to bocce ball here recently now, and we have 31 athletes who are uh, participating and joining in that, so it'll be a lot of fun there too. Within our business office, of course, it's becoming summer audit time with those uh, the field work during the week of June 25th, and then we will be preparing for the week of September 24th for our audit. We have, uh, over the years, been able to move that earlier, which is good, so that we're not in that crunch time when it comes December to needing to authorize our audit and authorize the levy. Uh, within um, our uh, food service, I want to highlight that our summer meals program did start this last week. Uh, we've had great turnouts at both of our TCU Montgomery and TCU La Center sites and anticipate now with summer rec starting that those will even increase even more. Within our, uh, we're going to have this during the uh, Titan Prides, but uh, recognizing that Kate Pacey was again selected for all state symphonic band. This will be his second year in a row and exciting to be able to hear them, him performing next year in February. Um, they also then do a summer um, camp up at usually it's at either St. Cloud or at St. John's which is a great experience for our kids so this will be um, pretty consistent that each year we've had a student making either all-state band or all-state choir and so that's a, a real credit to our fine arts programs. Like I said we have a lot of Titan prides tonight and so I'm going to keep this one short and I'll hope again that uh, everyone takes a look at all of our updates throughout our sites and our departments. Yep. Next, we'll move on to approve the agenda. There were everything that was changed was done before posting, so we're good there. Make, make, um, a, motion. make a motion. Second. Okay. Motion by Michelle Borkhart, second by Dale Buss. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes 5 0. Okay, move on to consent agenda, and there's a lot to be read here, so muddle with me here. Um, first, we have approval of minutes, May 11, 2018, school board meeting. Uh, next is May 29, 2018, special board meeting. Move on to personnel, new hires. Elise Lundeen, gifted and talented, Montgomery Lee Center in Lonsdale. Melissa Nielsen, elementary music, Lonsdale, Montgomery. Margaret Johnson, arts and technology, Lonsdale, Montgomery. Megan Oss, elementary teacher, Lonsdale. Megan Oss, jumpstart, Lonsdale. Rebecca Pauley, special education, Lee Center. Kaylee Bianchi, uh, middle school math, Montgomery. Bruce McWilliams, 712 Band Director, Montgomery and High School. Jim Timmerman, Special Education High School. Kayla Mullica, Elementary Teacher, Montgomery. Chad Johnson, 712 Activities Director. Amy Zazowski, K-12 Digital Learning and Media Specialist, District-wide. Cheryl Fredrer, uh, Media Para, Lonsdale. Allison Honick, Head Dance Line Coach. Aaron Winters, National Honor Society Co-Advisor. Luke Fleck, Assistant High School Robotics Advisor. Elise Lundeen, Targeted Service Professional, Lonsdale. Sheila Schoenbauer, Cheer Coach Football. Mary Stanky, Full-Time Custodian, Maintenance High School. Elise Lundeen, One Act Play Co-Advisor. Aaron Winters, One Act Co-Advisor. Uh, Julie Simon, Assistant Cook, Summer Food Service Program. Oh, the employment ending. Will be Matt Lewis, Second Grade, Montgomery. Jake Kane, Special Education Lee Center. 
Aaron Chantrak, Special Education High School, Caleb Artusik, Second Grade Lonsdale, Jennifer Leslie, Middle School Math Teacher Montgomery, Andrea Duran, uh, Duran, School Readiness Teacher Lonsdale, Becky Villard, Special Education Para Lonsdale, Allison Larson, Media Para Lonsdale, Aaron Olson, Paraprofessional Lonsdale, Eric Ritt, Assistant Robotics Advisor, Jason Holum, Seventh Grade Boys Basketball Coach, Eric Chantrak, Junior High Football Coach, Head Boys Basketball Coach, and Assistant Track and Field Coach. Peter Rogatsky, Assistant Football Coach, Eighth Grade Boys Basketball, Vanessa Hoffman, Cheer Coach Football, Jackie Rockaway, One Act Play Director, Phil Campbell, Junior High Basketball Coach, Jay Fredrickson, Junior High Wrestling Coach, Amy Alberg, National Honor Society Advisor. This will be a change from advisor to co-advisor. Uh, Heidi Vesey, High School Student Council Advisor. Uh, Mary Stanky, Part-Time Custodian High School. Michelle Trinka, ECFE, Preschool Para, District-wide. <coughs> and then on to policies. This will be the second and final readings. I'm just gonna go through the numbers. Policies are up there. It'll be 407, it'll be 413, in the 413 form, uh, 414, 514, 524, 534, 620, 624, 704, 712, and 802. And then we have contract approval, be 712 activities director, and TCU school support, office support. Approval of the bills in the amount of $527,194.79, and finance report. A motion for approval of the consent. So move. Second. Okay, motion by Dale Bus, second for second by Michelle Barkart. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes 5 0. Wonderful. Well, board members, I'd like to invite uh, Mr. Chad Johnson, our new uh, activities director, to come on up and have a chance for uh, us to give him a welcome and also for him to say a few words. So if you'd like to have a seat at the uh, master table there, you certainly can. Um, we're really glad that you could join us tonight, Chad. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, first, I'd like to say I'm excited to be here. Uh, Jason and I have been working three days now, so I've, I know everything. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, no, actually, a lot to go and listen to all the names, uh, hires and resignations. That's like the size of my town. I, I live in Nicollet. Um, so it'll be a little bit of a commute, but been a teacher for 24 years and a coach for 27, so had a quite a bit of experience and I really look forward to getting going in July. So I'm happy to be here and again, thanks for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome aboard. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Welcome, Jack. Okay, we'll move on to Titans Pride Awards. I believe Mr. Amiri will be up there and, nope. and Mr. Eppen. Yeah. Save um, the best for that. With our number of uh, Titan Prides uh, tonight and everything, rather than applaud for each one, we're going to wait until each presenter is done and then we'll give them a rousing round of applause. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, good evening, Dr. Pricelor Board. Uh, tonight, uh, I get the opportunity to uh, share some Titan Pride Award winners with you. And uh, Mr. Fitter uh, would also like to be here, but is out actually in North Dakota, the wonderful state of North Dakota, um, <laughs> actually taking in a career technical education conference at a, at a college there. So um, we're excited for that. And uh, But tonight, uh, the first one I want to, uh, the first two awards tonight, that you can see up there, are uh, two awards that are uh, not necessarily associated with the school, but really um, are, are there, and we are so proud of these young, two young men uh, for earning their Eagle Scout Award. And uh, for many of you, you know how much work and time and effort it puts to go into an Eagle Scout Award, so we're very proud to, uh, to uh, honor these young men for reaching that status of, of starting way back in elementary and continuing with projects and, and work towards a final goal. And, uh, we're lucky tonight to have two. Uh, unfortunately, Turner, uh, Stopey, was una unable to be with us this evening, uh, but we do have Brandon Jensen. So Brandon, why don't you come on up? Congratulations, sir. I'll forget it. Let's clap. Yeah, let's clap for Brandon. <laughs> So I did ask, uh, normally we don't have students speak, and, uh, but I did ask Brandon if he would just share just a little bit about what his project was. Um, Brandon's not quite as long as 
the speaker is the, the standing board chair. So we'll, we'll uh, let, uh, let just explain to them uh, what your project was. So for my project, I did it next. To, I did it in Bradshaw Woods, which is located next to Lee Sewer County Fairgrounds, and I built three benches, three birdhouses, and two bad boxes because I really wanted to make the community more or that park more no, to, to the community. Fabulous. And, and Turner's project, which I learned from uh, Mr. Desmond here, who is, uh, are you the leader, troop leader? Scout master. Scout master for, for these guys. Uh, he put up a, a, a number of wood duck houses um, around a sort of a wetlandish area. Um, and he uh, put those, built them, put them up, and also maintains those. And um, quite, of a, quite an investment into doing all those sorts of things. So both of them uh, kind of contributing to the wildlife and, the, and just the general well-being of our outdoors here in our community so we're, we're proud of you so if you want to go around and shake their hands that'd be great congratulations brandon thank you for your nice job uh the next one we want to recognize tonight is the montgomery sportsman's club do we have a representative from the montgomery sportsman's club here this evening with us uh, we uh, always are looking for help when it comes to some of our things. And one of the things that we hold off-site, as you know, was our ACT test this year. And um, it's really important to uh, have the students comfortable when they're doing those kinds of things for best performance. And uh, the Montgomery Sportsman's Club uh, saw the need and they have donated some snacks uh, for our, our juniors who take that test over the last couple of years. And uh, just that's kind of the extra thing that goes a long way in uh, helping our kids feel comfortable and, and appreciated and and uh, just you know filling some of those basic needs on that day when they're probably concerned about how well they're doing and how much time they have left and those kind of things so uh, really appreciate the Montgomery Sportsman's Club with their um, sponsorship of that over the last couple of years so thank you uh, the next one, and we do have a representative here from Mac and Tunes Fine Foods. I'd invite Chad Hindley to come on forward. Uh, they have been uh, partnering with us um, for quite some time, and, and as Mac and Tunes has come on and, and new to our community, uh, really has been supportive through us. And uh, they recently have celebrated their 100th year anniversary, if you've noticed the windshield clings and cars and those kind of things around. And part of that was um, having some of their patrons donate money towards a school of their choice. And uh, at the high school here, I know we received some financial uh, benefit from that. And what I was told is we placed in the top three and then Mac and Tunes matched the patrons donations to our school. And I believe our other buildings also uh, obtained some dollars from, from Mac and Tunes, so financial support there. And I also want to recognize Mac and Tunes um, in our Titan Pride here at the high school. Uh, we've been uh, having some drawings for some prizes and they also sponsored a bunch of gift cards for our high school, uh, high school students to earn through different activities and drawings and things. So I want to appreciate it and, and say thanks, Chad. We really appreciate Mac and Tunes' support and uh, got a certificate here for you to take with you. Thank you so much. And the last one I have here uh, tonight, before Jason takes over, uh, is to recognize Palmer Bus. And uh, yes, they are a contractor that we work with, and, uh, but they are also a, a, a large employer in our community. And a lot of our residents work for them and with them, and, and we appreciate that. But Palmer oftentimes um, will donate things to us. And it, it's above and beyond, and that's part of their outreach. It's something they can provide since they have the equipment. And we use their busing service um, for the ACT. I know they donate that every year. Uh, we also use it for um, different shuttles, I believe for graduation as well. They donate their driver's time and, and the equipment use and those kind of things. And they do it for other things too, as well as in our middle schools and our elementaries when we're trying to get kids from the different communities together when we do different activities. So uh, we just want to recognize Palmer Bus uh, tonight for their um, the great service they provide us as well as their donation and, and help on certain activities where we're trying to watch the pennies. So we really appreciate them. So let's give them a round of applause. Good evening, board, Dr. Preisler. All right, tonight we have quite a few Titan Pride Awards in the activities department. So we're gonna go through this as smoothly as we can. Um, those that I think I have here will recognize tonight um, with them receiving an award. So first I'd like to re recognize 
Cami Vargo. She's in for a couple awards uh, for drawing and for painting at the visual arts show. She placed and received a superior, which also gave her an opportunity to um, uh, go on to the state show as well. So that's an exciting um, accomplishment, along with being an all-conference catcher. Yep. Uh, next would be Caitlin Jakes, who also received a superior perfect score in painting. Okay. Kelly Vlasak, who also received a visual arts superior in painting. Um, Brad Davis, who's coming up, and you'll receive your all-conference award for being an infielder and pitcher and a catcher. Marty Kalina, he's coming up for all-conference honorable mentor catcher and shortstop. Grace Smith uh, is our 2018 honorable mention in girls golf. Okay. Sam Barnett is uh, she received a superior rater, rating in sculpture at the visual arts competition this year. I'd like to recognize, recognize our FFA farm management uh, for placing gold in 12th place. Isaac Rinda, uh, Brent Domeyer, Judd Samro, and, and Cameron Kruger. Our FFA meat evaluation team uh, received a gold in 12th place. That's Amelia Schatz, uh, James Krautkramer, Tim Teedy, and Stuart Schatz. Remember who I gave those to. Our uh, FFA floor culture received ninth place and a gold. Um, Maggie Hennon, Isabel Hennon, Michaela Malika, and Elizabeth Trinka. We also had our FFA Floriculture uh, place fifth. Uh, Shauna Burdan, Mackenzie Harstead, Rebecca Simon, and Tara Larson. Our FFA Horse Evaluation received a gold first place. Uh, Maddie Dahl, Laura Jurek, Philip Roth, and Anna Perchel. That's a pretty good one, first place. That's at the state level, right? Second? Yeah, oh. poultry. And that's in poultry? Wow, I really screwed that one up. Didn't <laughs> <I>? <laughs> uh, Right, Kendra Blaschko, Shelby Reeser, Kaylin Lindblom, and Sydney Walters. Did I get this one right? Second in horse evaluation, correct? Okay. You get first tonight. <laughs> first is way better than second. <laughs> Um, we would like to recognize Rachel Rinda, Jake Samro, Conrad McCready, and Brittany Teedy for their first place finish yep. in uh, Dairy Cattle Evaluation. Okay. And that team will be going on to national. Yeah, awesome. They're really getting first, not just here. <laughs> not just here, right? <laughs> okay, I have one more. Who did this many this month? Zach Sexy, please come up and receive your all conference center field award.
Is there anybody I missed here tonight? Congratulations. Hey, I got one thing, right? Thank you to everybody. Congratulations on uh, receiving all your awards and all your accomplishments this spring and throughout the year. Um, it really shows the diversity of all of our student athletes and those that are in activities to uh, do as well as they do with an activity. So congratulations. Okay, move on to open forum. I don't believe there's any slips turned in, Brenda. No slips? Okay. On informational items, uh, first one, first information item, but you're on activity report, Jason Mary. You're back up. You're back up. Activities <laughs> <laughs> report. Activities report there, Mr. Mary. Uh, yes. Would you like the mouse? Yeah. All right, so some of the activities report uh, we went through earlier in the year already when we did the uh, overview for soccer. Um, so the first part we don't have to go through as much. I did add in the activities participation and then some um, end of the year fun facts and, and so we'll get uh, started with the, the first part. We, I looked at uh, for our students by ethnicity within our athletics and you can see uh, the numbers there for 7 through 12. The second one was total uh, female male athletes by ethnicity. And then our female athletes by ethnicity. Our male athletes by ethnicity. And you can see in our fall, in the fall, uh, the number of boys that were out for football and cross country. And our boys that participated in winter sports. And boys who participated in spring sports. And I looked at the numbers of girls that participated in the fall sports. winter sports and our spring sports and what new to the report is uh, I went through and did all the activities participation um, there's 262 uh, boys that participate in all of the activities that are up on the left side here and now some of them obviously are going to be doubled up in some. They're going to be in multiple activities at a time. So a good number of our students, um, over almost over half, participate in our activities. And I looked at the girls as well, 233 total. Now we'd love to have that be 100%, but we're doing pretty good. Highlights from the 17-18 school year. Uh, in the fall season, we held four Positive Coaching Alliance workshops, one for administration, uh, which, um, which we had um, Joe Maturi, the former AD from the Golden Gophers that came in and did. Terry loved that one, that was her favorite. <laughs> and, uh, and we also um, did for coaches, parents, and athletes, and we'll have that as well again this year and the year following. So Chad's been brought up to speed on uh, po the Positive Coaching Alliance and our, our view and our mission toward um, not only competing at a high level, but also uh, learning to develop uh, the human side of our athletes and our, our students here at TCU. So he's excited about that. Uh, our, our girls swim team and diving was added. They had their first uh, successful season as TCU and looking forward to the second. Robotics was expanded to junior high. Hugo Ruiz qualified and placed at the state cross country meet and was all state as well as a place winner. Uh, we sent choir and band members to honors and state performances along with drama, the drama department performing the sound of music. Our winter uh, season highlighted uh, by uh, Lizzie Christian receiving only for the second time at TCU, the Minnesota State High School League Excel Award. And I was up there to watch her receive it and it was a, a great uh, time for her and a great moment. I, she even was kind enough to take a picture with me afterwards. Uh, the one act play performed thank you for flushing my head in the toilet 
which I know sounds like a crazy title, but it was really a great message about bullying and um, how people feel when they are bullied. Uh, the, the kids did a great job performing that. Wrestling placed eight individuals at sections, which was a great uh, accomplishment for them. I know they would have loved to have a few go on to state, but, and we were close, but um, that's why we compete, and sometimes we do it, and sometimes we don't. But eight to place at sections is a good, a good year. And they made it to the final four as well here at TCU. Um, the TCU Choir earned three superior ratings at sections. BPA had several places at state, and five more moved on to nationals, which is a great accomplishment for business professionals of America. The weightlifting team placed five individuals at state, one state champion, and JV finished third place as a team. And we are going to be hosting a weightlifting meet next year here. It's only a duel, but it's still uh, progress to get that activity here and, and uh, participating at home. And I know Mr. Meyer was a little surprised when I said, let's host one. And he goes, what, really? We're going to ho let's host one? I said, you bet. Let's, why not? Let's ho try and host one. So he, he has it all set up, so he's excited. Adaptive Hockey placed um, fifth at state, and um, we have a few students here. Blake uh, Perry participated on the varsity, and he was excited about that. He also, in the spring, made it on the softball team as well. Um, so in the spring, Section 2A Visual Arts competition, we had four excellence, 13 superiors, and four spotlight winners who qualified for the state art show, which Cami was recognized tonight as one of them. Um, the drama performed haphazardly ever after, which was a comedy set with fairy tales, and it was really quite comical. Uh, FFA sent several individuals and teams to state, whom also placed while dairy evaluation won state. Uh, 26 new NHS members were inducted this year. Hugo Ruiz and Jackson Nesmo qualified for state and also placed. Jackson placed third, and Hugo placed, uh, he placed third in the pole vault, and Hugo placed eighth in the 1600 meter. So a good showing by our TCU runners. Uh, and pole vaulter. Uh, several Titan athletes and fine arts students continue to perform and compete at the college level. We had quite a, uh, maybe a handful of signings this year where students are moving on to uh, uh, participate in college. So that's always a good sign. It's not our necessarily our goal, but it's nice to see that they enjoyed what they did here and then move on to the college level. So that's everything in a nutshell for the activities department. Thank you for all the work you've done. Yeah, thank you. I know this will be my last official board meeting, unless I make it to the work. Is there a workshop at the end of the, meet, or the month? Yes, there is. I, I might be able to pro propose one more sport or activity. No. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. But thank you for allowing me to be here at TCU. We really have loved our two years here. We've met so many great people, and working with all of you and the staff has been a great highlight in our life and we will miss you. It was a very tough decision for us to leave TCU, um, but in the end we felt we were missing out a lot at home with family and, and friends and just wanted to get closer to them. So it's definitely not a stepping stone as Miniota's a class below, and, but it is a chance for us to get a little closer to family. But we've absolutely loved our time here and thank you. And you hired a good one. Chad's been doing really good. At, uh, or well, really well at transitioning over. So, thank you, everyone. Well, thank you. Thank you. Jason. Good luck. Thank much. you, Jason. Okay, move on to Q Comp Annual Review. Unless you guys want to wait until the end. No. Okay. No, it's time to Oh, thanks, Brenda. I didn't realize that. That's excellent. There we go. Superintendent Bracelar, members of the board. My name is Matt Flugum. I'm the district facilitator for our QCOM program. Um, I, I do have with me our high school leader, Terry Squires, our with Center instructional leader, Jeff Ballman, and our Montgomery um, K8 leader, Tracy Ehlers. Uh, they have my back. <laughs> Literally. They have, my, they have my way back. Um, so we are required as part of our QCOM, which is part of the alternative teacher professional um, payment plan service, I forget the, I forget the acronym, uh, to do an annual review, and these are the results of that review. Uh, if you remember, due to a memorandum of understanding uh, last year, at the end of the year, we proposed a new QCOM program, which deals a lot with professional development, and especially the job embedded staff development that we do. Um, we do peer review through individual coaching. We target an instructional strategy, and our teachers complete a portfolio of implementation of that strategy as they went forward. 
early release development, we focus a lot on guaranteed viable curriculum as well as some site-based staff development depending on where our teachers' needs are and how we can uh, help to move them forward best. So overall, our peer review survey, which was redesigned from last year uh, to simplify things quite a bit, you'll notice there from little impact to highly impactful, we counted specifically those fours and fives from our educators. So in the first year of the, the new-ish structure of QComp, we do have 72% of our teachers saying that individual coaching is highly impactful to their practice in the classroom, as well as the collaborative learning teams that they uh, participate in on a weekly basis, looking at the curriculum that they implement, the uh, common assessments that they use to, to tell where students are and how they can get better, and how they as teachers can get better as well. 75% find those to be highly impactful as well. As part of our switch, we focused instead of uh, two evaluations or observations which were videotaped and our teachers at two times in a year were rated by their peers, we switched to a portfolio where they work with a coach to implement and make a strategy better through evidence and through artifacts that they create and, and develop. Some of the strategies that our teachers focused on, uh, our top six, in fact, were uh, student conferencing, meeting one-on-one -on -one with students to reflect with them and help move them forward. Differentiation, looking at the different levels of students that are in the classroom and how they can best meet the needs of those students. Focused note taking, especially with our, um, our look into AVID. We had some training on uh, Cornell notes and focused note taking and what the purpose of note taking should be in learning. Uh, and so some of our educators took a look into that. Into leveled questioning, whether using um, different levels from a basic understanding of a concept to applying it in a way that is new and novel to them. And then student self-reflection, uh, helping students to figure out when they understand something, when they know it, and when they need a little bit more work with it. As well as incorporating academic language. So when we ask a student to summarize something, they know the steps and stages in summary, so they can do that even more successfully. As our educators go through the portfolio, they create artifacts. The top five artifacts that our educators uh, went through, every educator did some kind of a research into a strategy. Something they either had tried before and weren't quite sure if they were doing it right, or something that was brand new to them, that was interesting to them as they moved through. Um, as they moved through. Analysis of student work is something that the Department of Education requires and we went through some of the processes that they can go through and we will continue to do so. So looking at where different levels of students are and then casting forward what can they do better. Discussion with other educators was another artifact that was pretty popular with our, uh, with our teachers. Sometimes it's really easy to get stuck in a classroom. Uh, and so as part of their artifact, they went out, they talked to a teacher that had incorporated a similar strategy that they were trying, and then they got a little bit of feedback as to what might work even better. Uh, focused observation is another requirement of, our, uh, of MDE, and that has a, a coach, a trained observer, go into the classroom and take a look at what's happening in the classroom. They might write down the types of questions being asked, they might write down uh, what different students were doing at different times. Uh, they might even track where the teacher is in the classroom as they ask questions. And all of that data then comes back in a reflection to try to make that individual practice better. Uh, and finally, observing another educator was something that uh, many of our educators really enjoyed doing. They took some time out of their day, uh, an hour, maybe their prep time, and they went in and watched another educator as they went through practice and then had a debriefing conversation with them. So each of these artifacts, uh, and there were multiple other ones that aren't listed up here, um, our, our teachers really went through a, a system of getting better at one specific thing. And that was really our focus. How do we get better at one idea rather than trying to do everything perfectly all the time? So a couple of examples. Uh, each artifact was requested to have some sort of evidence that connected to this. So you'll see this is an evidence of focused note taking on one side here, Cornell notes, as well as a visual that the student then put together. Our educators then reflected on each one, unpacking what happened in that lesson or in that unit or in that idea and what their st students were showing them and then some of the next steps that they would go through. And that's part of what our individual coaching uh, incorporates. So how do we get better with that? As far as analysis of student work go, here's an example of a data tracker where the, the teacher sat down with the student to mark up where that student was in success and then had that conference with that student and then her reflection of that. In focused observation, uh, the coach goes into the classroom, they have a specific idea of what they're looking for, they might script, in this case this is a scripting of the questioning that one of the members used 
and the other one then was responding to uh, those questions. And so this is a script of those questions so that we have a clear idea of exactly what was asked, in what order, and where we might be able to get better at asking questions as we move forward. Uh, and again, we have another uh, reflection down at the bottom there. So through our survey and through what we found, a couple of features to keep that, were, that worked really well as far as what our educators were telling us. Job embedded professional development, especially with the individual coaching. Uh, the majority of our educators liked meeting one-on-one -on -one with somebody to really dive deeply into what they do, and they met monthly with this person. So instead of having two points of contact with an entire group, having a monthly meeting with one individual allowed them to go deeper into practice. Also, uh, the collaborative teams. Uh, this is the first year that we really focused on data and curriculum in those teams and really where our students are, and that was another thing that our educators reported was really impactful. They also appreciated having a portfolio with one strategy and one focus strategy that they, they went with. Some things that we need to clarify and work on as we go through. First, uh, we need to clarify the types of strategies and research-based resources that are available to our teachers and help them to identify then um, what makes good research and which ones we should be adopting and how to, how to steer them toward the best practice, as research is telling us. Uh, with collaborative teams, diving even deeper into how a team can work collaboratively even better and support students at all levels. Reflective coaching conversations uh, to help to define uh, a clear look back instead of getting stuck in feelings, really getting into evidence. What did people say? How did it look? And moving forward and then applying next steps as they go. Uh, and then finally, analysis of student work was something that was really popular this year. Uh, we had a couple of different uh, processes that we went through, so further defining those processes so it's easier for our teachers to understand where they need to go and what they can do. So, are there any questions that might have come? Matt, could you explain the uh, coaching aspect of that? Was that, uh, you know, same grade level? multi-different grade levels going into the classrooms, and then, you know, what is their purpose as well? Sure, um, so we've adopted what's called a cognitive coaching mindset, um, where we do our best to make sure that, say, a first grade teacher is matched up with a first grade coach, but we have some, because of, of sizes of groups, we have some second grade teachers and first grade coaches. Um, the purpose and the function of that coach is then to help to clarify within the individual what's going on inside of their own thinking and their own process so that as we move forward we're developing self-directed learners so instead of a one shot here's my lesson we're really building capacity in our educators through these different processes and skills to to become kind of their own coach so the coach becomes more of a sounding board than an evaluator um, we do have our teacher development evaluation with evaluations that do occur uh, for our probationary teachers three times a year, for our teachers on a one and two year of a three year cycle. Uh, they have walkthroughs that go through and then in that third year there's a formal evaluation happening too. So to try to separate the coaching and the supporting aspect from the evaluation piece, um, we wanted to make sure that that coach is really more that mirror and sounding board building capacity that answer was there follow-up to uh, the folks that maybe scored lower on there other than the fours and the fives to see that other percent like what could be done better what it was they didn't like or anything like that yeah um, in addition to having just that rating scale uh, that we had at the top with a couple of, of questions that focused on that. We had an opportunity for comments as well. Okay. Uh, we took some time looking through those comments and that's where our areas to keep and things that we need Got to it. clarify came from. So hopefully that'll boost them the numbers next year right. is the idea. Right. One of the pieces that this shift, and this was a major shift um, from where we were within uh, um, the process, um, you know, all all year and, and not just this year but in the past you've been hearing us moving to empowering our students more personalization um, taking ownership and that's really what this process modeled as well um, so the the educators were really honing in and they do they started the year with a self-assessment on where their skills and strategies they felt were which helped them then to guide into what strategies they wanted to work on 
and that ongoing coaching piece became more of a um, posing the questions to get someone to think through their process rather than you did good or you didn't do so good. And so again, our educators began more to own where their growth is. And I think that's the piece that we heard in the coach meeting the other day, um, even at mid-year as well. This was kind of fuzzy at mid-year yet, but people stuck with it and they just, they really felt much more empowered and um, owned what they were doing. And what we're seeing um, initially within the IPDPs is a lot deeper reflections than what we had. So kudos to our leaders. Um, I know that you, you got bombarded with a lot of questions this year and, and our coaches hung in there and, and everyone took a risk at a process very, very different and we came out the other side going, yeah, this, is, this felt more authentic than, than just the observational tools. Appreciate your leadership. Thank you. Thanks, Ben. Thank you. Okay, we'll move on to committee updates. Looks like we have insurance, QCOMP advisory, and negotiations. I think we just covered the QCOMP. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, negotiations, we finalize the support staff and uh, is anyone I don't know where we're at on the other ones I'm really wondering. Um, only on that one yeah we're in the process with custodians um, we are in the process with our principals and we start paraprofessionals next week and then um, we have a number of individual contracts to be um, working through and then uh, we have not begun with food service yet so we have a large number that's on this off this year even years insurance nobody's here okay. so we finalized the insurance uh, plan and the votes and, and everything right. we talked about that and everybody had their yeah you know just i can look back in the calendar to see who met since the last time <laughs> we met and insurance was on there a couple of times but we did go through open enrollment we had um, a lot of individual meetings, more than ever, that uh, happened with our, uh, our staff and either Randy Hunt, Darren Hunt, or Paul Peterson. Um, all three were extremely um, knowledgeable, supportive, helped people through questions. We, did have, we do have a large number who are, are shifting where their plans might be and, and accessing some, um, some benefits that they maybe haven't been able to afford in the past. And so that was the whole idea, was to be able to um, get more affordable. Any other committees? Okay. Move on to new business. Uh, item A, reducing lead in drinking water and TCU's plan. Yeah. Um, Carl, if you'd like to come up to take any questions, but this is, uh, this is reflective of the uh, 2017 legislative action on each school district needing to have a management plan for lead and water. Um, and prior to that, we were already in, in the process of it and had been working through um, lead and water testing, but it makes it a, a little more official and we do need to submit it to the state. So, I don't know, Carl, if you want to hit a couple of highlights because this does really reflect the state model program right in alignment. Um, yeah. And as I said, we already had it going back in 2013 and prior to. So. Yeah, so our um, environmental and indoor air quality management firm is IEA and they've been associated with the district since consolidation and worked independently with the center for as long as I recall and had been with the district. And uh, they do a very good job of aligning their goals and all of the processes that we need to go through with the state of uh, Minnesota's requirements. In this case, we had tested uh, for lead and water uh, four years ago in 2013. Uh, had a couple of actionable results that we did take care of. Uh, one that we're going to look a little bit further into in an area of the building that's underutilized um, that we'll definitely clarify with IEA. But other than that, all of our, uh, our timelines and submissions uh, have fallen in lockstep with what the state has been requiring. So our next deep dive on lead and water assessment will happen the next year in the fall for that, uh, that five-year cycle. And we'll submit to the state, we'll post on our website, and we do have um, the uh, reports or the 
process itself and reports um, at our district office and then also within um, our facilities uh, documents and everything. So just puts us into closing the loop on a process that's been happening but making it officially protocol by state standards. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Take a motion. I'll make a motion. Second. Motion by Ashley Racimo, second by Michelle Borkhart. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes, 5-0. Great, thank you. Fiscal year 19 budget approval. Gene, would you like the uh, mouse or you want me to just You can do it, I think. We don't, I think it'll be, go. you don't mind? I don't mind at all. Okay, thanks. Um, Superintendent Pricer, members of the board, I'm Jean Pepp, Director of Business Services for Tri-City United. Um, I'm here today to recommend your approval of the FY19 adopted budget for the Tri-City United School District. Um, this budget was built with input from the administrators for our building sites, departments, and programs, and falls within the framework and recommendations of the Finance Committee. Um, revenue estimates are based on state and local levy federal funding sources as well as other local revenue. Um, expenditure estimates are based on projected staffing and programming as approved by the school board and also assumptions on operational expenditures. Um, this fiscal year will begin July 1 and it will conclude in um, June 30th of 2019. And um, the budget consists of five funds and um, we use our starting balance as the FY18 revised ending. So just a note to remind you that in this budget we're doing adapted that our starting balance is an estimate as opposed to when we typically do our revised budget then we have audited numbers for that. Um, I'll hit some highlights on each fund and you guys can let me know if you have some questions. Um, so the general fund on this budget has an ending balance of 8.5 million, which, has a, which is a fund balance percent of 23.8%. Um, in fund one, some of the considerations are enrollment. This was built with an enrollment projection of 1,897 ADM, uh, which translates to 2,071 APU. And that's the number that's used to multiply by the state um, funding formula of 6,312, which does incorporate the 2% increase um, that we have for a fiscal year of 19. Um, salaries, it, this budget incorporates our known contract agreements and includes a small estimated increase for the contracts yet to be settled. Um, and it does incorporate the known staff additions um, estimated um, at this point in time. Benefits, we, um, as you know, we did not have a percentage increase year over year for our health insurance, but we did have some plan changes as Superintendent Pricler just noted. So I did incorporate those known items. Um, we did have some people join and then some plan changes. So those are um, incorporated, but not a large increase as we didn't have a percentage, premium percentage or um, increase. So. Um, Let's see, the other uh, item under benefits is that TRA has increased from 7.5% to 7.71%. So this is what's, um, this is a incremental to all licensed salaries. So it's about $20,000 impact this year. Um, however, this is a planned phase in over five years. So each year they're doing 0.21% increase. So it was 7.5, will be 7.71 and then 7.92, and it'll go on like that for five years. Um, there is some discussions that the state might provide additional funding to cover this, and I believe they have in the past um, when they've had changes like this, but that has not yet been finalized. So the increase is included, but the potential revenue increase is not. So hopefully we will see that come through. Um, as I said, it's not as much this year, but it will continue to compound for us going forward. Um, other notable expenditures, um, we do include in this budget $240,000 for the technology one-to-one -one initiative. This is year three of the one-to-one -one initiative. Um, so going forward after this year, um, we would anticipate that all of our te technology life cycles 
and things like that would be um, covered under our regular budgets. Um, busing has been included and an insurance, an increase to our insurance has been included as well, which I'll share with you later <laughs> um, for approval. Um, so that's for fund one. Fund two. These are just the figures oh, there you in case go. we're wanting to see yep, the And if you have the sheet in front of you, um, as well, the colorful sheet, it'd be your far right section. As I indicated in some previous meetings, I did say that we were going to be bringing forward um, a deficit spend budget mm -hmm. by uh, a lesser amount than what we had originally anticipated with some figures, but it is, um, again, be based on some assumptions and everything, but it is at a deficit spend, something we're going to want to watch very carefully. And uh, obviously, we do have a bit of a fund balance, but that also needs to carry us forward for a long time to not be able to in, in the efforts to not have to do operating levies. I don't know if there's any other pieces from this you want to highlight, Jean, or you want to go to the fund two, four, and I mean, those, I, and then yeah, we can come back? No, if you want to stop and pause for questions on fund one, if that makes more sense to speak about it, you know, together. Are you, I, we can come back. No, the state, um, did legislature did uh, recommend that schools can um, take staff development dollars and put it into general fund we are choosing not to do that so that we can continue moving forward with our own staff development Am I yeah. correct on that these figures here um, are are designated and we do have plans for staff development it would and I, I realized that uh, you know, with teacher um, vote approval, we could touch those 2% in other years as well. And this year, as you said, they're just allowing districts to do that. Um, at this point, I would not be recommending that simply because of the curriculum work and staff development we need to do. But down the road, it may be something we need to consider if that kind of legislative language continues. Any other questions on fund one? We can circle back to um, so for fund two um, which is our food service fund the price we have we will not be having a price increase next year so the revenue looks similar to this year um, estimated and anticipate that the expenditures for next year under food service will actually be lower than than where I think we'll land um, this year for fund two um, because we will not be doing as much, we don't have as much planned equipment purchases as we have the prior two years. Um, under community service, um, this is fairly consistent um, with prior years as well. Fund two and fund four are essentially self supporting. Fund six will be a return for us as we have um, building construction funds. So this would include the um, balances that will be deposited in our building construction fund come closure of the bonds, which is scheduled for um, June 18th. Um, and then the draw from this would is based upon the ATNSR draw schedule. So the accuracy of that depending upon how construction timelines hold up. So hopefully very close. Or head, maybe. <laughs> um, and then debt service, this is the annual principal and interest payments on our district bonds. Many questions? Um, okay, so we don't have any questions. I'll seek a motion to approve the FY19 adopted budget. Seek a motion. I'll second it. Motion by Krista Gettle, or seconded by Ashley Receival. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes 5-0. Thanks, Thanks James. for your work on this, Gene. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks, Gene. And next item will be the 1819 membership in the Minnesota State High School League. This is simply <laughs> our, our annual membership in order for our uh, um, activities and athletics to be able to be recognized and supported by the Minnesota State High School League. Um, there was really no uh, change in any of the um, contracted amounts. It just is very straightforward annual. And then um, in our designation of uh, representatives, we would be having uh, Mr. Chad Johnson as our uh, administrative representative. In the past, um, Mr. Dale Buss has been the board representative, and that's typically come about during the organizational meetings. So since we are at a mid-year, 
that uh, we'd continue with Dale's name there and come the next organizational meeting, if that changes, we can submit that. Okay. No resolution There is not a resolution on the State High School League one. That's just a straight vote. We have a call here. Oh. Is there a resolution? It, right. It reads it as that, but it's not. That's just how it is. You just pass it this way. Okay. So I'll seek a motion. So move. Second. Motion by Dale Buss, second by Krista Gettle. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes 5 0. Okay, next we'll move on to adult basic literacy education reimbursement agreement. And is that a resolution? This is a resolution, yes, yes and so we would need. Yeah. So, school board resolution, whereas the Board of Education strives to provide a comprehensive community education program which serves the recreational enrichment and cultural and academic needs of residents and whereas the Board of Education hopes to realize the academic goal by making adult basic education opportunities available to its adults, re adult residents and whereas the Board of Education understands that programs funded through PL 230 Adult Education <coughs> Act of 1965 as amended and MS Chapter 123.55 Subdivision 8 General Powers of the Independent School District and Chapter 124.26 Subdivision 1.2 and 4 Education Program for Adults need to be a part of a cooperative adult basic education delivery system established by written established by written agreement among between two or more school districts. Now therefore, be it resolved that District 2905 agrees to work with District 2397 Lesseur Henderson, 2365 Gibbon, Fairfax, and Winthrop, 508 St. Peter, 310 Sibley East, 2905 Tri-City United, 507 Nicolet, 391 Cleveland, 829 Wasika, 2835 Janesville, Waldorf, and Prem, Pem, Burton, uh, 2168 New Richland, Heartland, Ellendale, Geneva, 2143 Water Valley Lesion, Morristown, the Sewer County Law Enforcement Center, and Nicolet County Law Enforcement Center in establishing a cooperative adult basic community <laughs> adult basic continuing education project for the 2018-19 school year. Okay, we've got a motion by Michelle Borkart. Look at a second. I'll second it. Second by Ashley Yaceva and this is a roll call vote. Dale? Yes. Krista? Yes. Ashley? Yes. Michelle? Yes. And I'm a yes. Motion passes 5-0. And next, move on to property liability casualty, auto and workers' compensation, continue coverage renewal. <laughs> uh, Lord. Superintendent Priceler, members of the board, I'm Jean Kopp, Director of Business Services for Tri City United. Um, I'm seeking approval to remain with Waller Insurance as Tri City United's agent with coverage through Wright Specialty for Property Liability Casualty and Auto and the SFM Mutual Insurance for Workers' Compensation Coverage. And we have found Valor to be highly service oriented and supportive in all areas of service provided. This plan year would run from July 1, 2018 through June 30th of 2019, so same as our fiscal year. Um, this proposal does include an annual premium increase of $24,000 for a total cost of $222,000. Um, this increase is explained by almost exclusively by an increase in workers' compensation workers' compensation coverage premium due to a rise in our experience modifier um, from a 1.41 to a 1.2, from, sorry, to a 1.41 from a 1.25. Um, this EMOD takes into account three years of claims history, excluding the most recent policy year. So for Tri-City United, that would be claims that took place in fiscal year 14, 15, and 16. So because we have a fiscal year that doesn't line up with the calendar year. Um, when they run these 
they usually run them on a calendar year, so it splits ours. So by the time we get it, we're halfway into another year. That's just why it's so delayed. Um, and the district does make all efforts to closely monitor and manage workers' comps claims. However, in recognition of the rising EMOD, uh, my recommendation does include a change in worker compensation agency from AmTrust Financial to SFM Mutual Insurance. SFM Mutual offers more proactive support and has more tools to mitigate and minimize worker comp claims. These tools include 24-7 nurses hotline, um, online claim analysis, and loss prevention support, among others. The SFM Mutual Insurance annual premium is a higher cost than the AmTrust Financial. So currently we're with AmTrust and I'm recommending we switch to SF, SFM. The increase, the difference between those two for the next year is an additional um, $1,932, but that's included in my $222,000 figure from the second paragraph. Um, so that is additional cost I recognize, however, due to the significant impact of worker compensation premium, I recommend this switch um, with the goal and expectation of reducing the district's EMOD. You guys have any questions? I've learned quite a bit about workers' comp. <laughs> so this is an additional year of increase. This, the EMA did increase last year as well. Um, we have three years that are included, as I stated. So we are we had we have two high years and we're straddling a low year. So we will have a high year drop off, but I don't know what the new year will be that comes on board. Uh, we have met with representatives from SFM Mutual already, and it's been very positive. I actually didn't attend, but um, our HR, uh, payroll HR, Maggie Grimm, and our buildings and grounds coordinator, Eric um, Schroeder, did meet with them, and they were, I think they had a very good meeting. Um, it's the recommendation of our agent that we switch um, based on some performance with AmTrust, who we are currently with, and then again, just recognizing we need we need to do something about the where we're at um, or risk um, having another increase <laughs> to our workers' comp and then we would potentially be in a different insurance pool, which would be much worse. So I recognize it's an additional cost, but I hope you see it as an investment to improve. Um, but a worker, I have information here on your executive summary on this, but a 1.0 is average for your whatever pool of comparables that the insurance agencies put you in. So being at a 1.2 or a 1.4 now um, puts us so we're at a higher at a higher risk level. So we um, need to change that if at all possible. Some stuff you can't control everything, but the stuff that we can do, we need to be taking action on. So getting people back to work and minimizing injuries is really critical. Gene, under the um group that we are with now, the SFM Mutual. That's the, that's the one I'm proposing we switch to. Right now no. we're with AmTrust. Okay, AmTrust. Yep. Uh, any claims that we, uh, someone might have against us, would that move into uh, those if they're ongoing? Yep, it all have to transfer over. Okay. Yep. With no loss to anyone? I, yeah. I, I don't, that I'm not exactly sure on how those transition over, but that has not been a point that our um, agent has raised concerns over. So I can um, reach back to him and, and clarify that there's no issues with transferring, but he did not indicate. raise or indicate any, any transfer problems. So be forward to having um, like those on the online claims analysis will be very helpful for us to be more proactive. So the other, the AmTrust, yep. AmTrust does not have any of these tools? No. Okay. Well, I appreciate you doing the work to find somebody that would provide us some avenues and some tools to right. help monitor and maintain and try to reduce. And we certainly are needing um, increased communication with whichever company we're working with in this area mm -hmm. and much more proactive stances and quicker responses. And that's what we were looking for and appreciate Jean and Maggie going out to research um, some possibilities there. Mm -hmm. I'll make a motion to switch. I'll second it. 
Okay, motion by Michelle Borkart, second by Ashley Receival. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes, 5-0. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Gene. So next we move on to approval of the 2018-19 K-8 student handbook. Brian and Deb, would you like to come and just even say a few words, even though it looks like you're pretty much moving status quo? Thank you, Good evening, board and Dr. Chrysler. As you can tell, um, we really don't have any changes to come forward this year. Um, our policies and language in the handbooks will remain the same. The only things that we will be doing will be updating dates, um, employees. We won't have to do lunch and milk prices. They'll stay the same. That's a um, first time. Yeah. <laughs> Contact information and fees. So. Yeah, and just many of the major things we did happened last year as we presented to the board at this time. And as you considered the changes you made last year, did you find that uh, that helped your systems and structures along and everything and communications? Yeah. Great. I think so. At least I can speak for the Montgomery building. Yeah, and you know, together we make the decisions to present and ask for your approval, and we've seen those be consistent and help us to be consistent across district, and which is of course key to to our successes. And this would also represent T.C. Lonsdale. Um, mm -hmm. Ms. Meyer is on a uh, large family gathering this uh, this week and unable to be here, so this does reflect all three of our elementary and two middle school sites. Any other questions? Great, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'll seek a motion to approve the 1819 K-8 student handbook. So moved. I'll second. Motion by Dale Buss, second by Krista Gettle. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes 5-0. We'll move on to the approval of the 2018-19-912 student handbook. And yeah, Mr. Jeff Effin's going to uh, share some of the key points of shifts and changes. Sure. Good evening again. Uh, much the same as what uh, the elementary and middle schools have just presented, just some update, updating on wording, um, references to policy, um, and then uh, updating of uh, some different names and corresponding dates and such as normal. Um, the only policy, or not policy, well, I guess the only discussion that we had quite a bit of was in regards to cell phones and electronic devices. And uh, some districts are, uh, I think districts are getting further and further apart on this than they are together. Some are in, uh, embracing them, having students use them, bring them, be active. Um, some districts, um, we read an article today um, that Cleveland is considering completely having them out of students' hands. Um, so people are uh, at different places and I think if you would pull our teachers they would also um, probably land in different places so quite a bit of discussion with our um, TBIS team on this and to how can we positively phrase it um, and uh, put a little bit more to it um, our old language in there had uh, students basically had it having to keep them in their lockers and those kinds of things and honestly that was not occurring um, uh, and uh, hard to blame students um, fear of theft, um, students' fears of um, not being connected to someone if something would happen, um, students uh, just having a lot of different things. And I say fears because a lot of those aren't necessarily going to happen. But um, So there's a lot of things out there. So we, uh, we took an approach where uh, we labeled this as, uh, you can see in green, that would be new writing. Um, students having a cell phone is a privilege, um, and they must adhere to the expectations. And what those expectations are in each teacher's classroom might be slightly different. So like I said, some of our teachers are asking them to use them. Um, we are getting closer to a one-to-one. -one. Uh, next year, we'll have three of our four grades have a device. Um, so some may say, Len, why do they need a cell phone too? Um, and that goes back to um, some discussion about um, we're preparing students for the real world. And in the real world, some of us at work have a laptop and we have a cell phone right here and we're using them together sometimes to do something, sometimes we're multitasking, um, sometimes we are distracted and we need to figure out how to get ourselves back onto track. And um, 
I guess that's my personal opinion and how we've chose to go through for the next year, but it's definitely an ongoing evaluation, not something we're saying this is how it's going to be. Uh, but basically if a student gets in trouble with that, uh, the first uh, instance is a conversation with the teacher talking about what the expectations are and a reminder, uh, hopefully in a positive tone. Uh, the second step is when uh, Mr. Fitter and myself would get involved and uh, also conference with the students, probably have them turned in for a couple of days. Um, and so on and so forth until it becomes a, an issue where it's three, four times and then we're going to get parents involved and, and uh, be meeting with the student to try, try to come up with a plan on how can they make it through the day without the distractions. So um, that's, that's what the language reflects there. So um, I guess any questions on that piece of it before we move on to the last part? How often have we ever gotten to third and further offenses? Oh, how many times this year have we gotten to someone down to the third one where they've had to turn it in for five consecutive school days? Um, a rough estimate, 20, 25. Wow. And they've done that? Yep. They pick it up at the end of each day. We don't want to send them off in their cars in the middle of winter without a cell phone, recognizing it could be a safety thing as well for them um, if something were to happen. Um, We've learned a little bit along the way, uh, making sure we let students notify their parent or parents that their phone will be shut down. We've had a couple of them that uh, turned the phone in. Mom and dad couldn't get a hold of them during the day and were worried, so they called. Oh, no, we have the phone. Uh, so uh, we've been tweaking that as we've been going through, making sure people are notified. But uh, yeah. This may be assumed, but I just want to ask is, will each teacher make it known and clear about what their expectations are at the beginning yeah. of the class? And is there a need to have that reflected in your handbook that teachers will make their expectations clear? Or is that just a given? It, it could be something we could place in there, but uh, remember this is for the students, so um, that will be, that is part of what you know, we're talking about syllabus for classes and those kind of things. We're asking teachers to be very, um, diligent in laying out their expectations for their course, whether it's an academic or behavioral expectation that they're, um, and, and that's what we're, as administrators and, and as other teachers in the building, um, that's the advice we're giving our students is you need to find out uh, in that specific classroom, in that environment that you're in, what the expectations are. Uh, much like we may run into different expectations throughout our days, um, students today need to be able to um, to adjust and adapt to the situation they're in at that time. And um, it's, it's a skill about uh, learning how to work with all kinds of different people in different situations. So we're gonna give that a shot for the year if you approve, and, uh, uh, but uh, always open for suggestions as we kind of wade through this uh, new kind of technological place in education, so. Um, we also did add in, which I believe you approved at uh, the board level, uh, credit for learning. So if we have a student transfer into our district, uh, MSBA recommended that we have some sort of credit for learning language, um, and we did take a snapshot of what you as the board had approved and also place that inside of the, um, inside the student handbook in a, in a much more abbreviated version related to policy uh, 620, I believe it was. Um, we also did update, um, the harassment policy where they added the word gender in about five different paragraphs um, for harassment. And uh, other than that, we cleaned up a few typos and that's, that's about where we landed uh, for this one. So. Any other questions? <coughs> All right, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Jeff. Okay, I'll we'll take a motion for approval of the 1819-912 student handbook. I'll make a motion. Motion by Krista. Second. Second by Michelle Borkart. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Motion passes 5-0. Uh, before we adjourn, though, I do want to, typically this would be the month when we would have had our activities handbook as well, but with the change um, from Mr. Mary to Mr. Johnson, we've held and we'll bring that forward at the July regular meeting. So you do have one more handbook to be ready for. Yeah, I'll take a motion. Close. Pass. Second. Okay, motion by Ashley Gasiedel, second by Michelle Borgart. To adjourn the meeting at 7.14, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passed.